wasn't the kiss that awakened her. It was cramp. The kiss seemed nice, but she felt like she'd been lying down on that bed for a hundred years and her body ached. As she opened her eyes, she saw a man who she vaguely recognised bending over her. She reacted like any right-thinking princess and punched him on the nose. What was that for? he said, sitting on the floor beside the bed. I don't expect to wake up in the morning and see a face staring down at me as if you'd right to be here. She swung her legs over the side of the bed, intending to stand up, but she had no strength. What have you done to me? she demanded. Me? Nothing. You've been asleep for a century. I'm the one that was able to wake you up. Oh, don't be so stupid. Nobody could sleep that long. If I had, that would make me a hundred and twenty years old. And if I had, would my skin be this young looking? Tell me the truth. The man stood up. Don't you remember your stepmother? She put a spell on you. Her head was now spinning. What on earth are you talking about? Have you eaten one too many toadstools? Look at your hand. It's no accident you have that scar. She looked. There was a little healed over cut right at the top of her third finger. So what is it? Are all princesses this dumb, he said. It's where the sewing machine needle pricked you. That's where the spell came from, and it was your stepmother that did it. Don't be ridiculous. I don't have a stepmother. My own mother is... She couldn't finish the sentence. Memories were stirring. A grey-haired man she knew as her father. The face of a woman with kind eyes who'd sang to her as a child, but then had gone away. Mother? And another face, over-made up with a glare and a mouth with vivid red lips, which looked like she'd choked down a salted pickled onion wrapped in tin foil. She looked at the man... Is there a reason you're wearing a sword? Because I had to fight through brambles to get to you. I'm beginning to wonder if it was worth it. But why are you wearing that costume? I mean, who wears tight pants and a green tunic? Princes. You're a prince? From where? Oh, never mind, just help me up. She held her hands out and the prince clasped them and pulled. She fell against him as her legs gave out from under her. They both fell clumsily and his hand ended up somewhere it shouldn't. You absolute beast! What do you think you're doing? Trying to stop you falling flat on your face. Don't be such a princess. She was angry now. She couldn't get her body to work and she was lying on this silly man with a sword. I am a princess idiot. I would thank you for saving me or bringing me back to life or whatever it was you did. But I can't stand. I don't know where I am. I'm lying on top of you and I seem to be wearing a dress my grandmother wouldn't be seen dead in. So I'm sorry if I'm a bit tetchy. He smiled at her and her anger started to recede. Why would you come to save me anyway? I'm in love with you. That one threw her. Oh, oh, well... I'm not in love with you. I mean, thanks and all that, but that costume and your hair. I'd kill for your hair, but not on a man. And once I get the use of my legs back, I'm walking away. Don't get me wrong, you're not that bad looking, but I can't handle those tusks. And the warts are a bit of a no-no. And cream really doesn't suit you. And you do need to get a good razor. Facial hair is a fashion statement, not a must. She had pins and needles now. The feeling was coming back. She managed to get to her feet. He stood up too. Thanks for your honesty, at least, he said. I've loved you from the moment I first saw you, and I haven't always looked this ugly. He started to walk away. She called to him. Did you tell me the truth about sleeping? Does that mean my parents have gone? Where am I supposed to go from here? He looked at her. She obviously didn't understand what had happened to both of them. You can go anywhere you like. I'd hoped you'd come with me. She laughed out loud before she could stop herself. Oh, you obviously don't get the concept of royalty. How could I be with you? He smiled at her, and a single tear escaped. Because you know me, he said. It took me a long while to realise how to break the spell, and I had to sacrifice myself in a bargain to save you. I didn't always look like this. You recognised me when I kissed you, didn't you? I thought I did. Well, think hard. You're the woman I was destined to be with. You were under a spell, a real spell, and I had to be alive long enough to live to save you. 
I wasn't kidding when I said a hundred years, so I looked for my own spell. Trouble is, it came with a price. So I ended up looking like a walrus dressed as a leprechaun. But I'm still me. Who? She looked at him. The face wasn't there, but realisation came through. John, it can't be. It can. It's me. They looked at each other, and though his face was different, his eyes still shone. Oh, John, what have you done? He sighed. What do you think? I found my own spell so I could be with you. I'll say this much for your stepmother. She hid you well. But your poor face. Hey, looks aren't everything. He smiled and his tusks dug into his cheeks. She came forward, took his head in her hands and kissed him. As they kissed, his face changed. No more tusks, warts and hair, just the Prince John she knew and loved. That's what's great about spells, he said. Sometimes a kiss from someone who loves you is all you need.